Hello everybody, I'm Jordan Bunch, host of Film Mavericks, and today is our first ever Film Critique Friday. We actually used to do these critiques over on Facebook on the Wedding Film Academy group, and they are back by popular demand. However, rather than doing them on Facebook, we're doing them on YouTube. So we actually had a ton of people who submitted a request to have me review their wedding films. And so we're going to start today with something from Lynn Productions. This is a wedding video filmed in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, they are from Alabama. So if you're kind of in that south uh, eastern region, you can probably hit a whole lot of states. So that's a great place to be. This is from uh, Jarrett Seegers. He has been filming weddings since 2014. Uh, he wants us to know that he had two filmmakers on this job. They had 10 hours of coverage. There were four locations, and the reception was 30 minutes away from the church. He says the immediate grand entrance and first dances upon arrival were at the reception. That's always a tricky transition from the grand entrances over to the first dance. Um, he says his the lead filmmaker did the bridal, bridal prep. The second filmmaker did the groom prep. And uh, he says it was kind of a logistical nightmare there in Tennessee. And he's uh, out of state as well. So that creates some extra trickiness. Uh, but he wanted to give us that groundwork before we watch this film. I will tell you, I watched the film already once before. And uh, really impressed. This is great work by Lynn Productions. And uh, something he should be proud of. It looks like this was one year ago that he filmed this wedding. Um, so he may have changed some things in the way he does things now. But uh, this is the film that he submitted. So this is one that we'll check out. Um, without further ado, let's dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. I just want to say something at the beginning here. So the intro was a animated logo, um, and it was about 10 seconds long. I think this is not a great first impression. Again, I really liked this film. When I first clicked play on it, I very much expected to not like the film. And it's just because of this logo intro that you put there. I think that it doesn't really do anything to help you whatsoever. Um, if we are watching this film, we're, we are either on your website or we're on your Vimeo page or we are watching it embedded on someone's Facebook. Because it's Vimeo, it gives you credit right there at the top. Like there's no reason for you to have us see that it's Lynn Productions for the first 10 seconds of the video. And I think it really pulls us away it makes me if i'm just a casual viewer it makes me not watch the video like if i have to watch 10 seconds of your logo then i'm not going to watch the video i'm going to bounce and so again i really loved this video but if i'm a casual viewer i will have not watched it to find out how great it is because of this 10 second logo in the intro the first few seconds of any video because our attentions are so pulled in different directions the first 10 seconds of your video are super important. Wasting it with a animated logo is not a great way to go, regardless of how much you like your logo, how much you like the animation that was done. Uh, it's, it's just not a good way to start out a video. Um, I would say this is something that you could use at the end of your video, but I would not put it at the beginning. If it were me, I would have that redone. Um, if I wanted to use a logo ending, a way to, to end the video with my logo, which is fine, something we do actually, um, I would have that redone. I don't think that that's a very well done logo animation. Um, so it, it doesn't put a doesn't put the, the best face on your company and clearly you're a talented person, your work is great. Um, and we're gonna talk a lot about that as we get into the video. You need to have somebody, re if you're gonna use a logo animation, do it at the end and have it redone because that is really subpar in comparison to everything else that I'm about to see and talk about. Again, this was done a year ago. Maybe you already updated it. Maybe you fixed all that. Um, but if not, I would make that my first order of business for 2019 is to fix that. And since you put these on Vimeo, uh, if you have the time and the resources, 
you can do re-uploads through Vimeo. So I would pull those down because again, you're gonna lose a lot of viewers just because they bounce away because they watched the first 10 seconds and then they were, were disinterested. And that's a major disservice to you because this is a great film. Okay, so speaking of a great film, let's actually watch it now. I'd like to take a moment to thank you, Maureen. I'm going to pause again. So we got about uh, six, seven seconds into the actual video before we hear someone talking. Um, and I think that's great to get them to get some sort of a story going from the very beginning, I think is a great way to get the viewer hooked, to make them want to watch more. And without that, um, which I see the vast majority of people don't have some sort of story that comes in in that first 10 seconds. It's again, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm likely to bounce. In fact, we were actually viewing some other people's films earlier in the day and I had a hard time watching more than 10, 15 seconds because there was nothing Story-wise, there was nothing going on here. I will also say that the opening drone shot and the gimbal work that's done here in the beginning is very well executed, um, very smooth, uh, multiple axes changing at the same time, so great fluid work there. It looks like you probably even did the trouble to, went through the trouble to light the cake up a little bit, and so that's great, and it helped you not blow out too much of your background uh, of course, the sky is blown out, but but the trees aren't, and so uh, that definitely helped you and gave some depth and texture to some of this stuff. Uh, thank you for being an example to me. Being your little sister, I didn't see you as the older sister saw you. Instead of being the wild I'm child... I'm pause again and backtrack to this shot here. Um, I love... I will say, first of all, I love when the sound bite is... It's great when the sound bites can complement the bride and groom. I think using a piece from the toast does this really well because I expect that I'm going to see some bridal prep footage here in a little bit, probably. Actually, I know I am because I already watched this film. Um, but uh, it's a great way to start off, start us off. And the great thing about doing it this way, by kind of time hopping this way, is before we get too far into the video, I know who the bride and groom are. And that's a problem I see with a lot of films is that they show tons and tons of B-roll or footage of even other people. And it takes me a while, sometimes even like a minute or longer into the film before I even know who the bride and groom are. And that's a major problem that you don't have here. So immediately from the beginning here, um, again, um, 25 seconds into the video, but I'm only 14 seconds into the actual video. If you take off the logo, I know who the bride and groom are. And I'm beginning to hear a little bit about who they actually are. So um, that's fantastic. One thing I will say is your angle here on the bride and groom isn't great. Um, and it's because you have this big bouquet and this is very common. This is a common problem that we have. And so um, it's pretty easy to think about uh, in advance is that we have some sort of a big flower arrangement at the head table and it's covering up the face of the groom and so if we can just raise that angle or make an adjustment oftentimes i will i'll make an adjustment to the arrangement in advance of the toast uh, because i don't want that blocking them and so we knew that they were going to sit down if we knew that in advance hopefully we did because we talked to them then we know that that flower arrangement is going to be blocking part of his face we can either adjust the flower arrangement we can scoot it to one side or the other i've even taken flower arrangements off of a table before if i needed to um, when they were really huge and they were going to block their faces, it's not acceptable to have their faces being blocked. And so you can either move the flower arrangement or you can raise the camera up to a higher angle and shoot down at them. So it's blocking less of them, but I definitely don't want it blocking their faces. I do see that you have done some work to intentionally light them here, um, which is great. You've got a, a light coming in from the side here. Um, and then we've also lit them uh, from this direction. Um, so that's good. Let's keep going. Our sister saw you. Instead of being the wild child, I saw you as someone that I could learn a lot from. And for you, Mike. Um, okay, let me keep watching, actually. I would like to thank you for being the perfect guy for Marine. 
As the priest said today in church, you guys were made for each other, and it is very clear to everyone who has ever met either of you. Vimeo. Okay, I wanted to get a little bit further in to get a little bit more feel um, of how this first part goes again. And we'll backtrack and I want to talk a little bit more about this. I was having a little bit of a hard time tracking what's going on with the story elements of what the bridesmaid is saying and the B-roll footage that's being used. Um, I was very much expecting after this piece of B-roll that, okay, I'm getting ready to be, I'm getting ready to be in the church. Um, we're about to transition to the ceremony because we have all these great clips of the B-roll, which are very well done. Um, great camera movement. Uh, there's action in the shots. Um, I love the reflection on this church. Um, so there's some really great stuff there, but it confused me. It felt sort of out of place with the story that was being told. I'm hearing about how great the bride is. I'm hearing then a second story about how great the groom is, but the footage doesn't really match that story. Again, the footage is beautiful and it's a great story, a uh, great audio piece that she's doing there. The audio sounds great, um, but the, the B-roll doesn't support the story that's being told. I would like, if I'm, if I'm hearing about how great the groom is, that would be a cool place to show me, uh, show me the groom, uh, show me, maybe he's getting ready, maybe he's hanging out with his friends, and there's some killer footage of him hanging out with his friends here later. Um, but I would think about tying these things together. How can the audio pieces tie together with the B-roll that we're using? Um, that's how we really tell a story: is by matching the audio and the visuals together in a beautiful way that support the story. So let's watch that again, sort of with that in mind. I could learn a lot from. The other thing I want to say about the B-roll is you did a great job of matching it to the beat of the song. Um, there's some like big heavy beats that you hit and it just feels nice, it feels natural. Um, that's really well done. And for you, Mike, on behalf of our whole family, I would like to thank you for being the perfect guy for Marie. I'm also going to point this out, actually. I like this. Uh, I see your audio source, and that's fine. Um, but I just want to point it out for anybody who wants to think about a backup audio source for Toast. If you look at the microphone, you see he's taped a recorder, or he's got some sort of a sleeve or something that he's put a recorder onto the actual mic that she's holding. So if the DJ does something on the soundboard or, or whatever your other source is, you've got this great backup source that the speaker is going to be talking directly into. So props to you on whether that's your main source or your backup. I don't care, but you know it's great that you took that extra measure and there's a tip for anyone else. It's a great way to have a backup source. Thank you for being the perfect guy for Marine. As the priest said today in church, you guys were made for each other, and it is very clear to everyone who has ever met either of you as alone, as single people, or together as a couple. It is very Looks like you got a couple of good high angles there um, at the church, and that's cool. It looks like you got to shoot from the balcony. I love that punch-in that you did, um, that, that zoom uh, that you did in the edit. I think that adds a lot to such a wide overhead shot that could otherwise feel kind of boring. Um, so nice job on that. It's clear that you guys are perfect for each other. I do think that part matches up nicely where you say they're perfect for each other. Bride's walking, uh, dad's walking bride down the aisle and handing her off. And so that, that part uh, does match up nicely with each other. So well done on that. Maureen, the church shares your joy. Um, 
again, the B-roll is just really nicely done. You really captured the details beautifully. I really dug that shot of the ring from overhead. Um, I think that was really nicely done. When Once we get here into the bridal prep, I'm going to see a lot more issues with lighting and color. Um, and gosh, bridal rooms are usually the hardest part of the day for good lighting and color. Um, and so then I sort of couch my conversation in that my understanding of how difficult it is shooting in some bridal suites um, for both lighting and color. Um, but that's definitely an area of improvement um, that could be had here. I will say though, uh, for not bringing in any extra light to this, I do appreciate your choice. You had the choice here of blowing out the uh, the window, the light from the window, or blowing or you know underexposing the bride. And I actually prefer this choice to the alternative to lighting her up. And I've talked about that in a previous um, review that we did, but I can even see the detail in the clouds here. And I really like that actually. And what it does is it leaves, leaves all the detail around her. What would be cool is if you had an extra light source that was lighting her, um, I think that would add a whole lot to it. It would feel more natural in the room. We get kind of a, a, a very different mood shift with this shot than what we had previously, which everything's much more kind of uh, bright and cheerful looking uh, than this feels kind of more gloomy. And so by bringing another light, you've, you've got lights in your kit. Um, I've noticed from other shots. So why not bring it in here and use it in the bridal prep? It will help out a lot with the, the quality of the light um, the amount of light when you're trying to uh, balance these two things of, of shooting towards the window. Um, and the other thing you can think about is if you really don't want to bring a light in there, then you need to think more about positioning um, during these moments to using the window to your advantage rather than shooting against it and fighting it. So that's another kind of way you can approach this. Like you did here. See, this shot is beautifully lit. And her skin looks nice um, from the front here. I can tell there was obviously like sort of a green shift to the room. And so think about accomplishing that, uh, fixing that in camera by you know, using your green shift, taking out some of the green or adding some magenta into the shot in camera. This is a problem I see, actually I'm gonna say this, uh, overall in in the most of the footage, there's a, a there's a green issue. There's a lot more green in skin tones. And this is kind of a throughout, um, throughout most of the shots that I see. I see a whole lot of green in the skin tones. And that's usually not what a bride wants to see. I I tend, and that, this is maybe even, even an error in my ways, but I, I tend towards a little bit warm. Um, I find that most brides appreciate that more so than kind of this greenish hue. So that may be something you think about whether you fix it in camera, which is ideal, or whether you do some more work in your color grade. Um, but I think that would really improve the film dramatically if you worked on some of the color issues in the skin tones. Shares your joy, warmly welcomes you together with your family and friends. Today in the presence of God, our Father. You do a nice job of mixing up uh, tight and wide and medium, getting us in on the details of mom helping her out with the dress, with the shoes. Um, I will say this, let me go back. Um, this shot feels a little bit awkward and I think it's just the composition. If someone's facing um, in one direction, you generally wanna put the open side of um, the image in the direction that they're looking. This just sort of feels awkward, like she should be here. She should be on the left side instead of on the right side of the image since she's looking off to the right. Um, it just feels unnatural to the eye. So that's something to think about with your composition there. You establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. But overall, the bridal coverage, that was really well done. Um, like the cool shot from the ground. You also had just like, it was obvious to me that her relationship with her mother was really important to her by watching that. And so that's a key thing that you accomplished there, making the mother of the bride happy. Great job. 
Um, again, the shot here starting out with the groom. I love the choice to use a silhouette here um, rather than blowing out the background because it just looks cheap when you blow out the background. So nice job. And then we cut to using that light to your advantage, having this dramatic fall off, which is great because I imagine this is probably a messy room. It's the guy's suite. I see a bunch of guys back there getting ready. Um, so great choice to light them up and blow the background into darkness. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire to fulfill every one of your prayers. May the Lord bless these rings which you will give to each other. This is a good, good job of you again. Like you're using the, the words to support the, um, sorry, using the footage to support the words. So there's a shot about the Lord blessing their rings and they're walking hand in hand with their rings, obviously being a focal point. So great job. It's a sign of love and fidelity. Now there's a shot here where the um, the photographer sort of off frame in the shot and then a quick jerk. It'd be nice maybe if you could cut before that jerk happens. Um, I'm not sure, you know, maybe she made a weird face afterwards or something and you just couldn't use it. But if you could have, that would have been nice. I can see the dramatic shift in the color of the light from this room to the other room that they were in. It was just way greener over there. And maybe that's, again, maybe that's something that's done in camera. It's still green here, but way less so. Um, so just. really sweet I, I really wish we had audio of him reading that letter um, maybe the groom wouldn't do that for you or something but um, but the footage was awesome great looking footage um, one thing I'll say is I feel like your composition throughout I made that one comment about um, composition being poor in that one particular shot but your composition throughout is really solid um, and I thought that was a great example of that there with the groom reading his letter I just really wanted to have the audio of him reading it because it was obviously like a big emotional moment for him. He was crying reading it, so I want to know what he said. Maureen, take this ring. Maureen, take this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna go back. I'm, I'm having some trouble in the edit with the time shifting that's happening. And it's not that I don't like time shifting. Um, I think time shifting can be really well done. It's just it needs to have some sort of emotion to it. It needs to be going in a direction. And I feel like some of the time shifting is random. And maybe it's just that, you know, I'm sort of thick today and I'm not thinking straight or whatever, but I can't figure out what that direction is that is headed. Um, and so the time shifting just feels very random. Um, and I don't know what's going on with it. Yeah, I wish, I wish I could figure out what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish with the time shift. Is it just to keep sort of visual interest or I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but that's something to think about is, What's a, what's a direction I can head? What's a sort of common uh, theme that can sort of tie these things together? Because um, right now it just feels sort of random. This is cool. I love that you rode in the trolley with them. I love this footage. Um, like the fact that it's like all shaky and stuff. It doesn't bother me in the least bit. I actually love it. I think it sort of shows like the 
the energy, the excitement, the fun of the whole thing, the fact that they are like, you know, that the camera's moving and that they're wobbling and they're holding, you know, their drinks and it just, all of it just gives so much energy and fun and excitement and I think it's fantastic. Aunt Judy and Aunt Connie invited us to go golfing. And the again, we have the the bouquet that's like right. It looks like it's going into his nostril almost, um, and it's starting to interfere a little bit with her too. So I don't want to beat a dead horse there, but uh, this this particular shot uh, dramatizes what I was saying even more than the other stuff. Two of them were so inseparable that I spent 18 holes riding, hanging on the side of a cart so that they could sit next to each other while Mike played golf. I said after that round that it wouldn't be... Okay, I said earlier that the shaking and stuff didn't bother me. It didn't bother me when it was on the trolley because it just made sense. Like, oh, we're on a trolley. It's kind of crazy. It's bustling around and all this stuff. But when it was like um, on the street and like filming the street sign and then filming the trolley from on the street... That's when the shakiness bothered me a little bit more. It didn't feel like it had a reason for it. So I always think camera movement needs to have a reason. Um, we don't use a particular type of camera movement just aimlessly. It's like, you know, five years ago, everybody was using sliders for everything. It's just like slider, 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 slider. And there was no reason for it. It was just like, oh, well, I need camera movement, so I'll do a slider shot. And I think... Now we're getting to a place where a lot of people are like, oh, well, handheld, handheld everything. Um, and like, you know, handheld's a great look, but it needs to have a reason. And in this shot, I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure what the reason would be for the handheld shaky shot, except in the trolley where it's fantastic. Um, so something to think about is like, be intentional about your camera movement. Have a reason why it supports the story that it wouldn't be long before those two got married. May the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you forever and ever. I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Michael Sykes. Um, so yeah, the time shifting again here, I'm just having trouble with figuring out how it works. And, and I know like this was sort of a, I'm not sure, um, what denomination or whatever, but it's sort of like a high church type thing. And sometimes we don't get great stuff from that high church thing where they're just sort of reciting the church vows or whatever. Um, and so like that can be an issue and I understand like that's, um, a struggle. And so maybe that's why there was so much time shifting is to keep interest during the portion of the ceremony that was just not all that interesting maybe. And so I don't know, I'm not gonna give like specific advice about how it could be better done because that's hard to do without seeing the footage, without being there on the wedding day. But yeah, I just feel like it should be noted that I was confused about why we were shifting times throughout the day. by honor and privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Michael Seitz. It's a good job of like transitioning us. I liked how you're introducing them with the DJ's voice, even though we're in the church, because that sort of gave a common way to, to tie us in. Like they're being introduced at the church too at that moment but you're hearing the DJ doing it and you're using that as a transition into the reception. And I think it's a great way to do it. You did it also with some nice footage to show us where we are. And so it's great to show us where we are, we hear what's happening, and then we get to see them come in. So that's a great way to transition it.
uh, I, I liked you had a good balance of sort of shifting between the wides and the tights there. I would think a little bit more about my selection of when I chose like some of those moments, like, you know, the, the big fellow walking across the dance room floor, holding this beer when the wide shot was happening. Like maybe I'd choose a tight shot during that time and a wider shot when it was a little bit more clean, nothing distracting going on. Um, so another something to think about there. I guess another thing I'll say here too is the B roll that was used during the first dances. Um, it seems like you just needed, like you felt like, oh, I just need B-roll here. So I'm going to slap this reception B-roll in there. Um, and like that can work, you know, it's not a bad thing. Um, but it would be cooler if we transitioned um, from, looks like you kind of had a pattern there of you're like, uh, you know, bride and groom, bride and dad, groom and mom. And you just kind of went for it all in a row like that. And that's fine. I, I, that's what I usually do. Um, but like mixing the random B roll in maybe didn't work all that well. Um, so maybe if you had, uh, more coverage, like if you're trying to deliver the full, you had two shooters, right? So if you're trying to deliver the full thing, maybe have one shooter who's focused more on coverage of the dances with like a wide lens and maybe the person who's shooting tight can hop around and get different angles of it. And so that you can cut together those different angles rather than trying to fill it with random B-roll. Again, the B-roll is beautifully done, so it's fine, but that would be a way to step the game up even further. Sweet knife they're cutting this cake with, by the way. This is all really fun footage. I really like all this. You can tell like they're having a blast. I mean, everybody's sweating. They're dancing so hard. They're sweating. So obviously everybody's having a blast. There's lots of energy there. The handheld look works great in dance footage. Um, we're getting in tight a lot. I'd like to see some more like wide but close up shots. Um, that could be kind of fun here to mix in because it looks like most of it's all really tight stuff, which is great. Like it looks awesome, but it'd be cool to have a mix of that sort of thing maybe. Um, the other thing I'm noticing is clearly you have some light light that you're using here, um, but I don't think you're using it in the way that's really maximizing what could happen here, right? Like most of the time I'm seeing that your subject is lit by the purple or blue DJ light. Their skin would look so much better if they were lit by your light instead. So think about your positioning, think about the placing of your lights. Um, you know, maybe you... I mean, do you really need two people shooting all the dancing footage? Maybe your second shooter can uh, move your light around for you when you need it. Uh, maybe you can also get a more portable light that you can move around to different places. Or maybe you could get an additional light so you're lighting from multiple angles. Um, but think about using the light um, where it's more used as a key rather than a fill or a, a backlight. Um, for a lot of this, especially whenever you have DJs who are using a lot of blue and green and red lights, which, you know, look cool and fun when you're just dancing, but they don't look great on video. And some of these, it looks like the light was maybe just turned off altogether. Maybe you're in another part of the room where the light wasn't shining. Um, and that's when things... Um, get really kind of green and grainy and we lose a lot of the detail. Um, so yeah, just think of, think more intentionally. You've got the equipment already. Just think more intentionally about how you use it. The other thing I'll say is 
by doing that, by lighting it up the way that you want it to be, like by key lighting it with your light source rather than whatever's in the room, whatever uplighting was there, whatever the DJ had going on, you're gonna get like way more consistent look to your footage. This feels like, the color grade feels super random and it's, I don't think it, I say the color grade, like the color looks very random throughout. And it's because you're, even though you've got your own light there, you're mostly relying on the natural light the natural light in the room, um, what the DJ had, what the, the lighting was like in the reception hall, rather than using your own light to your advantage. And because of that, there's a dramatic shift, a sort of a jarring shift from one shot to the next in the color. So it would look way more cohesive if you lit it properly um, using your light as a key uh, to give a much more fluid look rather than looking like a bunch of random clips. like. If I saw these independently from each other, I could easily think that um, these all happened in different venues even. So using your key really eliminates that problem. Fun little exit, nice little, like, I'd be fine if you used this as the opener um, where it just says their names, but just real briefly or maybe even overlay that over the drone footage or something. Because if I'm, if I'm a friend or family of the bride or groom and I'm coming across this video, I care about Maureen and Michael. I don't care about Lynn Productions. Now, after I watched the video and I loved it, I'm gonna see at the end it was Lynn Productions and you know if I need somebody, I'm gonna reach out to you. But again, use maybe use that as your hook or something because that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the couple. I'm not interested in you. That's just the world that we live in, you know? So so once again, that was really fantastic. Overall, I really love this film. I learned about the couple. I felt fun energy from them. I got to see them in action with their friends. I love the trolley scene. I love um, so much of what you did about this film. And I just think that there's, you know, a couple of little things that you could change and really elevate your game. And, uh, you know, that's what this is all about. This is all about finding those little things that we can do. Like, yeah, being, it's an encouraging thing and it should be that you're doing so many things so well. You said you started in 2014. I'm sure you've come so far since then. I know there's no way you're shooting stuff that looked that great in 2014. Um, and so you should be proud of that. Like, that's a great accomplishment of what you've done here. And nobody can take anything away from that because this is really, really solid work. Um, so this is really just about affirming that. And then what can I do to, in 2019, to take this thing to the next level, to really improve what I'm delivering to my couples, to improve what I'm showing off as my portfolio so that I can book those higher end weddings, so that I can, you know, maybe potentially raise my prices up. Maybe shoot uh, shoot more weddings if that's what your goal is, or shoot um, shoot weddings at a higher price point. All right, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully you learned something new. Uh, Jarrett, thanks again so much for risking yourself, for putting yourself out there like this. This is really for not only just your benefit, but for the benefit of so many others in the community. So you are a champion among men for putting this out there for um, for for doing that for the community. So thank you. If you like this video click the like button, hit subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss a video. Who knows, it may be your video that's coming up so you don't wanna miss it. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification. But also, leave your comments down in the comment section below. Give your encouragement to Jarrett. Tell him how awesome this film was. If you have any other questions about anything that I commented on here, please put it in the comment section below. I will be very active in the comment section, so I'm happy to answer your stuff. And if you uh, want your own film submitted, then just send me a message, um, put it in the, the comment section below. Just go ahead and put your video down there and we'll be pulling from some of those videos to do further critiques. So we will see you in the next video.